Um, going back to the idea of building muscle tissue, right? Is there a certain period of time, like after exercise, where somebody's going to get the best muscle protein synthesis? Should they be consuming, you know, a certain amount of protein, you know, in a certain period of time right after their exercise, or can they delay it for a few hours? Will that impact their, uh, you know, their muscle protein synthesis? Yeah. So there's no. It's sort of like a like a barn door. It's it's open for several hours and probably twenty four yeah. hours. So it's not like you have to drink a protein shake before you hit the showers. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, uh, you know your your muscles will fall off. That's definitely that's not what the they teach in the bodybuilding magazines. That's right? what they teach in the bodybuilding magazines. Yeah, no, you can you can take a shower and, and cook up your meal at home, and in an hour hour and a half later, you, you're perfectly fine. Um, that being said, there's no negative to consuming protein right after your workout either. And I have to also say talking about sort of, uh, you also have this, uh, the muscle is able to soak up a lot of carbohydrates too, without right. the need for a lot of insulin, because you have a translocation of, of, of GLUT4 towards the cell membrane and it pulls in uh, glucose. And uh, normally you need more insulin for doing that. But now as a result of contraction, you have this increased sensitivity. So I'd say uh, talking about the importance of protein, yes, but also, talking about the importance of, of ingesting carbohydrates at that time and doing so without the need for insulin, I'd say is a very good thing. So, and, yeah. um, and we know that in general, right, the, the high carbohydrate intake, if we have to put paint with broad strokes, is that that typically uh, is, is resulting in better performance, having higher glycogen levels, especially like, you know, those, those last few reps, uh, for instance, yeah. uh, and uh, so, yeah, I think think that's important. So also the sort of the carbohydrate window after yeah. exercise, I think is important where you can ingest a combination of glucose and fructose to uh, optimize intake. And um, so, yeah, that is something I would, uh, I would also uh, recommend uh, focusing on. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. The glute 4 transporter protein is more active, which pulls glucose out of the bloodstream more effectively into the cell, uh, you know, in, in the kind of the post uh, exercise window, as opposed to perhaps, you know, eight, 10 hours later in the day, um, you're going to, you're not going to quite have as much of a GLUT4 effect. So you're going to, body's going to need to produce more insulin to get it into the cell. And of course, you know, one of the key tips when it comes to um, longevity, good, healthy aging is keeping your insulin secretions under control. So that is an important important thing to remember. Now, how about the leucine threshold, right? So, um, you know, I've heard a lot of other people talk about like three to four grams or so of leucine in like a certain eating window helps activate uh, muscle protein synthesis. Is important to get enough leucine. What if they're doing like a lot of collagen protein or bone broth or something like that, that doesn't have as much leucine? Yeah. I mean, again, it's like, uh, if that's all you're eating in a meal, then yeah, then maybe yeah. it's problematic, right? But uh, let's say if you cooked your rice in some bone broth and have some, uh, you know, meat with it or fish with yeah. it, right? Then uh, there's no, uh, you know, it's it's a, you you're combining protein sources there and making a complementary amino acid profile. So that only gets uh, so a lot of those things they sort of shake out in a uh, sort of you know laboratory setting. But then in sort of a real world uh, scenario, I think that those are, are more like details because, uh, you know, no one's consuming just whey protein or just uh, collagen protein uh, yeah. all throughout the day and uh, or even in single meals for that matter. So I, I would always opt to focus to do take a food force approach and just honestly try to eat a meal after your workout instead of, you know, a, a protein shake with uh just a bunch of you know glucose or other you know free, free sugars in it i'd definitely always opt for uh, for a food first approach and i understand that for some individuals that may be tricky or if you work out twice a day then maybe there's some benefit to uh, ingesting some uh some, some liquid foods but yeah i would always opt for just eating a eating a meal after your uh, your workouts before your workout in, in so far possible and uh in that part, yeah, you don't need to worry really about uh, about those nuances. I mean, if you the leucine threshold basically indicates three to four grams of leucine, and then you know, let's assume we have an eight to ten percent um, leucine content. Yeah, so if you're looking at like you know, thirty to forty grams of protein, you're having a high amount, and maybe you want to shoot at the higher amount a little bit when you're on uh, uh, when you ingest a lot of plant-rich protein sources. 
they're typically a little bit lower in leucine or uh, essential amino acids. But once you get high enough, probably like the 40 grams per meal, uh, overall intake of 1.8 grams per kilogram body weight, even the amino acid differences between plant and animal sources become uh, irrelevant. And I suspect the same with, you know, if you have like, you know, 10 or 20 percent of your protein intake from some collagen provided your protein intake is high enough that yeah. there's no uh, negatives and you could argue maybe there's some benefit again this is more from animal models that you you know ingesting enough glycine and methionine mm. maybe, uh, uh, probably not a bad thing and maybe a good thing yeah. uh, but although i'm not super convinced that uh, it would always shake out uh, in in humans right we know protein restriction is a great thing when you're a rodent but I'd say it's a really bad thing when you're a human.